as it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Look, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. Hey, welcome to Branch Together. We are in the midst of a global pandemic, and things have been bleak, lonely, downright bizarre. But we are here on YouTube uh, in a series called Looking for Light. And this is going to be part two of an account of a woman Jesus meets at a well in Samaria. We hope you find uh, some light today as we read. So Jesus has come through Samaria. He's stopping at a well at noon. And along comes a woman who's had five husbands and is living with one who isn't her husband. He asks her for a drink of water and supernaturally knows all about her life. Jesus wanted her to know that he was more than just a Jewish stranger. He had insight into people's lives. He wants to help her see her need for life transformation, not just a need for water. And in the midst of this jarring interaction, Jesus has exposed her. Very gently and quietly, since they were alone, but it shakes her up. This man is seeing right into her pain and her struggle, looking for love in all the wrong places. And so she tries to put some distance between them by asking an age-old question. So let's pick back up in John 4. Just like many of us trying to reduce faith to a series of rules to follow, this woman at the well tries to reduce true worship to a matter of worship at some place or another. The woman said to him, Sir, I see that you're a prophet. Our ancestors worshiped on this mountain, but you say the place where people must worship is in Jerusalem. Do you really think that she wants to know the answer to that? Do you think at noon in the desert, when she has to get water for her household, the most burning question on her mind is where to worship? I'd say she's trying to create some distance between her hurt and this man, Jesus. But, he doesn't blow it off. He answers her. Believe me, the time is coming when you Samaritans will worship the Father neither here at this mountain nor there in Jerusalem. You guys worship guessing in the dark. We Jews worship in the clear light of day. God's way of salvation is made available through the Jews, but the time is coming. In fact, it has come when what you're called will not matter and where you go to worship will not matter. The Father is looking for those who will worship him in spirit and in truth. For God is spirit, so those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So where is it that we're supposed to worship? Who's right? She certainly has no good reason to listen to a Jewish man. The people have been opposed to Samaritans for generations. So she says, hmm, well, you know what? I know that Messiah is coming, and when he comes, he'll explain it all to us. I think I'll wait for that. Thank you. Jesus responds, I am the Messiah. A Jewish man talking to a Samaritan woman who is looking for love in all the wrong places, talking about religion and her five and a half husbands, this is an awkward conversation, and it keeps getting more awkward. Because just then, the disciples come back from their Wawa run with the hoagies, and they were astonished at what Jesus was doing. They couldn't believe that he was talking to that kind of woman. No one said a word, but I'm sure their faces showed it. The woman puts down her water jar and goes back into town. The disciples stand there trying to hand him a sandwich, but Jesus won't take the food. I have food to eat that you don't know about. Wait, who got him food? Why did we even bother going to get lunch? The disciples' confusion about the food is pretty similar to the woman's confusion about the water. So he explains, the food that will keep me going is doing the will of the one who sent me, finishing the work he has started. We have a saying, don't we? Don't we have a saying, four months more until the harvest? Well, look around, boys. The fields are ripe for harvest right now. Others have started the work for you, 
and you'll get to do the fun part and we'll all get to rejoice together. And he says this because the disciples need to be ready for what happens next. The woman had gone back into town and began to tell everyone she could about this Messiah. The one who used to do her best to hide from everyone in town, to avoid talking, to avoid the sideways glances, she walks straight up to them and admitted, there's a man who knows everything I've ever done. Could this be the Messiah? Come and see. What was it about this encounter that she had with Jesus that freed her to be so transparent about her life? And the town comes out in droves. They believed because of her testimony. The Samaritans asked Jesus to stay two days to teach them. And many, many believed. They say, we've heard from you and now we've heard it for ourselves. And we know for sure he is the savior of the world. If the disciples' eyes weren't open to the opportunity in front of them because of prejudice, preconceived notions, or too small an idea of the work of God, they might have tried to persuade Jesus to just move on. But instead, they reaped a harvest that they didn't sow any seed for. When I was in campus ministry, I moved across the state to plant a chapter at a school that could use a witnessing community. I didn't have any leads. I worked and worked. I gathered professors and coaches and we prayed around campus. I met with students here and there and had glimpses of hope of what would come. And then after a bit, the students would fizzle out or they'd disappear. We never got club status. And so I snuck around campus trying to avoid the scary parking lot man. You have no idea. Finding spaces to meet with students that didn't have to be reserved. Trying to gather a group without being able to set up a table in the student center or hang up a flyer. After two years of failure, I gave up pass the job on to someone else. Do you know the very next school year, amazing students began to come along? The group grew in depth, in number, and in influence. They met and prayed with the same professor who I had pegged as an advisor. And you know what? Just this week, I received a phone call from that campus staff. And guess what? I really want to share with you this good news. They said, we were just approved for club status after all that time. And the professor came to one of our meetings and he was brought to tears. He said, I prayed with Jenna all that time for this to happen. One sows and another reaps. That's what he said. One sows and another reaps, which is right from our passage. Psalm 126, five to six says, may those who sow with tears reap with shouts of joy. Those who go out weeping, Bearing the seeds for sowing shall come home with shouts of joy, carrying their sheaves. So those who went off with heavy hearts will come home laughing with armloads of blessing. Now back in our story, we have another come and see. We have another simple introduction. The woman shared plainly from her experience and boldly because of the vulnerability of her story. They came to see Jesus for themselves and they believed. He is the savior of the world. Remember that. Jesus is not a prophet. Jesus was not just a good example. Jesus was and is a savior. He rescues people from evil and hopeless situations. He breaks the chains of their past and gives them the power to face a new future. The woman at the well is an example of Jesus saving power. Town probably thought she was beyond hope, a lost cause, but Jesus rescued her. He is the savior of the world. Like the woman and the disciples, we often don't get it the first few times Jesus tells us something. So as I read the passage, ask him to show you what you need to see today, what you need to hear. The woman said to him, Sir, I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you say that the place where people must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, 
Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father, neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for the Father seeks such as these to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When he comes, he will proclaim all things to us. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking to you. Just then, his disciples came. They were astonished that he was speaking with a woman, but no one said, What do you want? Or, Why are you speaking with her? Then the woman left her water jar and went back to the city. She said to the people, Come and see a man who told me everything I had ever done. He cannot be the Messiah, can he? They left the city and were on their way to him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples said to one another, Surely no one has brought him something to eat. Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to complete his work. Do you not say four months more, then comes the harvest? But I tell you, look around you and see how the fields are ripe for harvesting. The reaper is already receiving wages and is gathering fruit for eternal life, so that the sower and the reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying holds true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap for which you did not labor. Others have labored, and you have entered into their labor. Many Samaritans from that city believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I have ever done. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them. And he stayed there two days. And many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, It is no longer because of what you said that we believe. For we have heard for ourselves and we know that this is truly the Savior of the world. Let's pray. God, we thank you for the saving work that you do through your son, Jesus. We thank you that no one is a lost cause, that no one is too far gone or too far from you to be brought back, to be set right, to be set free. Jesus, you truly are the Savior of the world. And I pray that for each of us listening today, that it, you would be the Savior of our world, of our lives, of our hearts. Jesus, meet us where we are at. Show up for us today. You are good, you are kind, you are gentle. Thank you for who you are. And Jesus, it's in your name we pray. Amen.